to fall and be be with the broken one time before I go Hello everyone and welcome back to Penn State League. We're tonight bringing you guys more PSU LCS action where we have Gabagool versus Climbing Iron tonight. Two teams with a lot of new faces on them, some returning from prior seasons of the PSU LCS, but should be an exciting match nonetheless. 
Once again, I'm Infamous Trash, joined here by one of our newer recruits, Runk. Nice to have you back on stream. It is excellent to be here. And we will be getting into draft in just a second. I'm going to tell him cast is ready to go. But yeah, a lot of new faces here for me at least, and I've been around for quite a bit. Uh, some returning ones, all too cool, coming in for support for GABA. Uh, Mikey Milk as well in the jungle, a familiar face. Rat on crack. Uh, some great names support. here tonight. Very high, very high name uh, name draw here. We actually do have a pro draft tonight, so I'll switch us over there. And we are already getting into it. So Mordecai is going to be banned away first and foremost. Uh, is part of Mord Cheems, you know. Might be a little indicative of the uh, name practice there. Yeah, and I actually saw their mid laner was playing a little bit of it as well. Bit of a flex pick for them. Yep. Uh, sorry about the timer. I'm going to get that set up real quick. It's been a while since we've actually gotten the pro draft on stream, but first ban here for red is a no ban. We'll have to see how that comes through in the league client. It is looking like it's probably going to be a rerun. Yep. Given that, I'm not sure exactly what happened with that ban there, but they're not saying anything about it. So yeah, we're just going to keep like, it going. Looks like they're probably just unfamiliar with it. Uh, would seem so. Bane also going to be banned away from Antac. Uh, has been a stronger pick recently. Does counter a lot of stuff like Ezreal, which is, if you're not necessarily super confident in winning the matchup, you know, very safe pick. Has long range poke. Decent damage. Uh, given that you can hit those Mystic shots, so still has some pretty good potency. Katarina as well. Bane's obviously just the scaling master as well in bot lane. Yep. The Zac yep. pick is interesting here. Um, Majestic Llama on a Gabagool is actually a Zac top one trick. Interesting. That would make sense then, given that they want to take away that Zack. Still waiting on for what the first ban is. We don't know yet. Uh, no one has put that in chat. I guess they're just taking the no ban for right now. That's going to be the assumption. Morgana actually going to be first pick here. Very interesting to see a B1 Morgana. Yeah, you don't see it too often. I mean, it's it's a decent flex pick. It's coming back in mid lane now that mages are a little stronger. So let's see where that goes. You can technically still flex a jungle as well, though. I mean, picking it this early, while you do have some flex potential, the flex potential isn't as high with, as with some other champions. Uh, the potency of her outside of the support definitely does diminish and is very matchup dependent. So can offer up a lot of counters here. The Karma comes to mind, which can be flexed in two of the roles Morgana really wants to go in anyway. So something you do have to be a little bit careful about. Yeah, I'm not too keen on it being first, especially because it's not exactly a high contest pick right now. Also true. And we have Zin Zhao locked in on two for Climbing Iron. There, however, is a very high priority, very strong pick in the current meta. Uh, early game jungler can get off level two cheese ganks if you have the option for it. Uh, does have pretty good mid to late game scaling, especially considering um, alt Crescent Guard does give him vulnerability or invulnerability from range attacks outside of his ultimate. So despite not being necessarily a very tanky champion in himself, the Steric Gauge, as well as that ultimate, can be extraordinarily hard to deal with in team fights as it kind of initiates, peels backs, takes a whole bunch of damage, burns a whole bunch of CDs, and then can go back in and finish off the job or follow up on someone else's follow-up engage. It will be Misfortune locked in here as AD Carry coming into the gin. Yeah, the, that's a kind of interesting bot lane. There's not much. Misfortune's just going to... Poke probably is their plan, along with the Morgana. Ooh, Kha'Zix. Yeah. And Kha'Zix, also probably a bit early for the champion. I mean, yeah, you see the jungle matchup, but you really need to see comps before you pick some of these guys uh, to yeah. really get an idea of what you're going with here. We have seen players play a very strong Kha'Zix game, though, from a blind position. Mitmok is one of the ones that came to mind. Uh, we saw him in the last game uh, playing for NGY. Classical Kha'Zix players has blinded it before and do a pretty good job of it. Janna going to be pick on three here for Climbing Iron right out there. Bot lane, not necessarily pick I'd play into Morgana. Again, looking more at that like Karma. They can really bully her out of lane. Uh, invulnerability. 
or pretty much invuln the black shell just invulns a lot of her kit you don't get the slow you don't get a ton of the damage although w can break it later on so yeah, we're going with a I, no I ban am a, i am a fan of jana as a champion right now i think she's very strong right now i think she has a lot of a lot of peel she actually offers as well uh i agree though morgana pretty much just neutralizes her entire kit essentially yes as we continue onward into the draft here. And it looks like the no bans are going to be Shen and Amumu. Uh, is the decision from the side of Climbing Iron having some difficulties with their picks at the moment. Not terribly a big deal. Gabagool still trying to lock in their third or their fourth band, sorry. As we round down this clock. Might be a third no ban. Oh. We'll have to see. Coming through. Uh, there's still some time to pick it in. I was a little bit off on my countdown, but either way. It's going to be up. Oh, it just updated. There we go. So we got Mundo. So it was Ajax Akali. Not sure why that took so long to update on stream. Yeah. Mine was uh, a bit interesting looking as well. Yep. Uh. They meant to pick Mundo, not ban him. Okay, so this draft is just unbelievably scuffed. Fiddlesticks with the old champion picture as well. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to restart the draft here, so... We're just kind of sitting tight on stream here until everyone decides on what they're doing. They're just trying to feel each other out a little bit here. Yeah, a little bit far in the draft for a restart at this point, but when you have not one, not two, three failures in a row, it's a little bit of a tough send, so... Yeah, it's, it's one thing when you miss a ban. It's another thing when you ban a champ that you wanted you know, to pick. You miss one ban, then you miss another ban, and then you ban the champion you were going to pick on R4. <sighs> It's a little, little interesting, but we'll get a new pro draft up here in just a second. So, Got give us one minute on that. About it. Yep, we're gonna go to put the live cam, cause why not? Uh, as we switch through here, but well, let's see. I'm assuming most of the draft is gonna be the same. Maybe the Morgana gets banned. I mean, that's a pretty bad show of sport if you no ban. They pick Morgana and then you ban it immediately, but. I don't know. We'll see how this one plays out once we get into it. I'm pulling up the pick band tool now. We should be good to go here in just a second. Okay. And let me mute this. Get, change up the draft soundtrack, you know. Keep it fresh. Yeah, keep things interesting. Okay. And it looks looks like we're good. Uh, cast is going to R up. And we are going to head back into... I don't know why these cameras keep freezing. There we go. Uh, we're going to head back into the Pro Draft. So starting it back up fresh and new. Looks like they have agreed to ban the same champs and pick the same champs. Yep. So phase one should be pretty much identical to what we saw the first time around. I won't even necessarily go. So we're going to just wait here and see how this all comes through. Again, just kind of waiting on the startup here. And there we go. We are back into it. This should be a pretty quick little blow through. Just rounding out what we had. There's the Mordekaiser band to reiterate. For those of you joining in a little late, uh, welcome. We're into game one, draft two. <laughs> well, deja vu going on. Yep. Uh, I don't know what we're doing here with bands. I guess we're going to ban Zach first this time. 
I think they couldn't remember what order they banned in. Not Probably not. Numbers. Katarina also banned. There's the Vayne ban. Very nice. And this should be, yep, there's the Twitch for Rat on this Crack. Should be the Shen is what they said it was. I'm assuming they should ban Shen here. Or Mumu. Well, Mumu was the other one they said they could they were going to ban. It, and they're going to ban. Entirely different. All right. It's a Vi ban now. So okay. that's a way. Morgana's picked. Jin's picked. Very good. Just the same as last time. We should be seeing Zin here on two. Uh, to play into the Morgana. Yep, there's the Zin on two. Now we should go back over to the other side. Misfortune Kha'Zix coming yeah. up. Very, still very weird draft. Uh, we just have to replay play it again, and then we'll get these phase two bands here with Jonna rounding it out. And phase right. two begins. Now we don't know what's going to happen. Yep, all new territory here. This will be the Shen band that was mentioned earlier. So... Should be good. I'm guessing it's going to be Shen and Mumu, maybe? Uh, Mumu doesn't make yeah. any sense here to ban, but hey, we'll, we'll hey, see. We haven't seen anything make sense so far. Yeah, that's very true. Very, very good draft. Akali banned away, taking away that chem tank option. Uh, if that's something they play on top and mid, who knows? Uh, Mord Cheems might be picking up it. That might be his other AP option. Red Bonda might be familiar with it as well. And it looks like instead it'll be Yorick. Really focusing on that top bands there with the Zach, Shen, and York. Yep. And now we have first band here on pick four. I'm expecting this to be probably a top lane pick. Uh, top lane is generally where you like to see counter pick sometimes, but looking at ranks, it's the mid, but it's going to be a blind Malzahar. Oh, okay. We're just going to. Interesting strategy. All the artillery mages are up. You got Velkaz, you got Zareth, you got Ziggs, who can all go very well with your current composition with Morgana Misfortune kind of being your peel back. You can have Kha'Zix roam around as an assassin. Uh, all the artillerys do really good in the mouths. You kind of space him out, can deal with his ult pretty well. Uh, you're just worried about that flash. Ultimately, but again, you're forcing Mouse to burn the flash. You can also flash in kind and dodge out a lot of the damage. Uh, not Maybe not all the setup, but quite a bit of the damage. And there's the Zareth. So we do get an artillery mage in mid lane. Zareth is great. I, I'm interested to see if he's going to go with the first strike. First strike can be super good on Zareth because I am i can't say confidently. I'm pretty sure his Q is the longest range basic ability in the game. Uh, I think straight shot skill, yes. Uh, Belkaz might be able to equal or outrange, outrange if, you, uh, angles, yeah. Yeah, if you angle it correctly. Uh, but it will be the Mundo pickup here on to four or five for blue team but kind of a takeaway there is they uh yeah they said yeah, that's what they wanted to pick there. last time but they didn't pick on r4 so it will be the mundo locked in here blind again some matchups still available uh can go yep. with a lot of the top lane lane bullies still Not up and too around many top laners left though just with there being four uh, top you lane bands and top lane picked you still if you want to go really aggressive there's stuff like the darius nas is more of a yep. handshakes scaling just matchup farm. yep farm it up and we have Two very interesting teams to round out our game one. Um, a lot of purple going on. Yeah, it seems to be the th at least a color theme, and that's about all these champions have in common with each other, or like to do. So, yeah, kind of a pseudo kite back comp on Gabagool with a front line and Mundo, and then a random assassin thrown in there uh, in the jungle. And then over on the side of Climbing Iron, you have a weird pick comp with a split push Nasus, I'm assuming, is what they're going to try to run here using Malzahar, Janna, and then combine it with the Deadly Flourish from Jin to get pickoffs. Yeah, I just, I'm assuming the plan is Janna is just going to peel for the Jin, Malzahar is going to lock down their carry, and Zin, I'm kind of worried he's going to get left on his own when he goes in. Uh, it is, the... yeah... The Kha'Zix is what is really confusing me here. Kha'Zix is definitely one of the oddballs in this one, for sure. Again, I guess you can have something like a Mundo trying to go in the side lane. Uh, if he can get ahead of Nasus, he will be pretty potent. It's pretty hard to kill the guy. 
Uh, even as a like stacked up Nasus you're going to be dealing with the Grievous Wounds. Uh, that Mundo is obviously just going to be able to itemize very easily against you with a bram just quick Bramble Vest pickup is all he needs uh, to deal with that. On terms of Nas Nasus' self-healing, Mundo as well, tons and tons of self-regen in his kit. So pretty okay uh, in the early 1v1. So yeah, gonna be two brambles coming out first in top lane. I don't think it'll be early brambles. I doubt either of these champions needs it. That's the thing. It's just like yeah, a later pickup for the fights. Farm. Yeah, yeah, their plan's probably just to get mythic farm. and then go from there. Neither of these guys needs to see too much early action. Mundo should have plenty of pressure early in the top lane to make room for Mikey Milk to possibly look for top crab. Uh, mid lane. Honestly, pretty even early on. Malzahar should get pushed just from the nature of being Malzahar's death. It's going to need that first item completion to really contest the lane priority that Malzahar can grab. Space Aids is quite a tool at pushing lanes. And without being able to really one-shot casters, Death has a little bit of a harder time. Has to burn a little bit more mana, a little bit more spells to keep up. So, yeah, he's, uh, Zareth is one of those champs that uh, until you hit six, you don't really feel like much of a champ. Yeah, Malzar can be uh, can get the pressure early on there. Does have to be a little bit wary of the Kha'Zix. And then bot lane is going to be very interesting. I'd give it over to Jin and Janna in the early game, mostly because Morgana, while well, Morgana Misfortune has a lot of pick potential, if you hit one of those dark bindings into the three-second route and then you can burst someone down as MF, there's a lot of potency there. But that's going on you hitting that one skill shot. And other than that, this lane just does not have a lot of self-pressure. You're going to have Jin, who's going to be able to both outrange and, for the most part, do pretty good damage on Misfortune early on, given he's timing his reloads correctly. Uh, and Janna, as well as a much, much better poke mage uh, than Morgana can ever hope to be with the point and click on W and Q being the AoE, which can also help shove wave. Uh, be a, even a little bit, I think, better than uh, Morgana's W in certain instances. So... Yeah, and the Jana Q gives Jin a really long range W option for the roots. Absolutely. So that seems to be with right now. One thing that we like to do here on PSVLCS from time to time is go with like the which team ended up going for the draft win. And honestly, this is a pretty even dosage of bad. Yeah, it's uh the teams are pretty even. This is very everywhere. It's <laughs> just randomness. Uh, this is the, like you give it you give a if I gave a bot the mid lane top lane support jungle and bot lane champions and said pick randomly this is a draft I could conceivably see yeah this I, wouldn't be I too think, insane I think even the bands can be a little bit random here let's see the only real like I think super matchup pick was the Zareth and the Malzahar that's the matchup that I like the most just because Zareth is so darn safe into that and he just gets a free lane off of it Oh, which is what the Artillery Mage wants to do. And there's only really Zin who can punish him. Uh, one of the problems with Artillery Mages that you find in the mid lane is you can pick him into great matchups. Like Cassiopeia, pick an Artillery Mage, boom, champion's worthless. Malzar, pick an Artillery Mage, boom, you have free lane. It's like there's so many instances of that, but the jungle and support matchups can also influence that. Like how much access they're going to have to you in team fights. Because uh, none of the Artillery Mages have pretty much any movement options besides Ziggs with his W. Yeah, so, that's what I was... I was just going to touch on is Zareth is definitely a safe pick. I'm interested to see in team fighting how his positioning is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if uh, Nasus gets in range to wither him, he's pretty much just stuck. Hey, if Nasus is getting range to wither you as an artillery mate, you're, you're already yeah, you're you, just... you are beyond gone. That's just not a situation that you can let yourself get into. And again, the only one who has really any easy access on Zareth is going to be Zin with the W. Uh, coming from a very long range, get some good engage, and that champion is just so sticky, it's going to be hard for Hungry Hawk to really deal with it. Uh, of course, you do have Flash all for Malzahar, which you can do some stuff about. Yes. And that is kind of one of the other things that's going to be interesting in this game, is not a lot of great itemization for Quicksilver, sh for Quicksilver Sash here. Maybe Mis Misfortune doesn't want to buy it. Mundo doesn't really like the Bruiser item. Maybe Kha'Zix goes for it, but... Is attacks that not a lot of these champions play. Good. Yeah, I mean, when you have Jax or something, that's not as big of a deal because Silvermere Dawn isn't terrible. It's not great, don't get me wrong. You'd rather build anything else, mm -hmm. but in the situation where it's going to let you get through Malzahar ulti, that's a fine item. None of these champions really like that. There's no mage version of it. Yeah, it's, uh, Misfortune's it's build hates it. Definitely better the last uh, season now that we have a few more Quicksilver items, but... Oh, so, definitely, for sure. The, new, the more they add, the more good. it's going to be useful. But 
it's not entirely great of a situation here. But, you know, they always say if you're just better than the person you're leaning against. Yeah, I mean, that. that's... We're not accounting... This is We're looking at the matchups here. Name plates are completely turned off yeah, we're for this kind of a game. It's, it's pretty even in a... Most of the positions, there's there's one pretty big gap there, but he's not on his main, so. Eh, we'll see how it goes here in just a minute. So we're getting on to the loading screen. Be there in just a second, but looks like we at least have an exciting matchup, something we don't see too often. Definitely not pro conformity on the meta for this one. Uh, hey, LCS certainly is not. on right now. If you want to watch Pro, you go watch some <laughs> LCS. Hey, you keep us on in a sub tab for the viewership. We won't mind, but it's certainly shaping up to be a bit of an interesting one. Do have Grasp on Nasus, by the way. Not something we see yeah, terribly often anymore the, instead of the Phase Rush. Went for TP over Ghost. So we get on into game here. There's some great skins going. Yeah, skin game is always strong. Star Zareth, one of my favorite skins, just in the entire game. Yep. And we have our game. Game one of these two guys. Got two matches here tonight. See who can maybe go for another one of the 2-0 starts. We have two teams sitting up there already. In Concal's boosters, as well as for top one bot, sitting at the 2-0 marker. For top eh. one bot with the most impressive win of the week. <laughs> the FF. <laughs> Zero game time. Game scheduled way before it needed to be, and then they didn't show up. Happens. And now, ooh, Red might be in a little bit of trouble. It is isolated, so take a pretty good damage for that Q, but doesn't look like... Majestic wants to push any further on the Mundo. Probably could have pushed that further. They wanted to maybe look to burn a flash. Minions have spawned. Yeah, they probably were probably just a little worried. Level about, 1 Nasus uh, is kind of terrible. So I think they could have pushed yeah. that further if they wanted it to. Zin was resetting. They didn't have the knowledge on that, so fair enough. But Yeah, my guess is they're just trying to play a little safe. Yep, Miles will still get to bat lane very late. Uh, Zaz should yeah. be able to get... Minion or two early XP lead, which is quite useful. And we're going to have opposite red starts for the jungler. So Zin Zhao going to be looking for that bot lane early. And Mikey Milk going for the isolated top lane on the Nasus slash mid lane look. Yep, yeah, the Mundo is going to get the lane a little late so it doesn't show. I don't know why he hid. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it just disguise where Kha'Zix is going. I mean, the assumption he's starting red, but... Yeah, then you have MF and Morgana come out anyways. So. We'll see here uh, how these bot lanes play. Again, this is giving the focus for MX Xenon early on. Looks like he's going to go into probably a 5 camp, just skipping the Krugs. So a little bit slower than some Zins decide to go, but not expecting him to see too much from Kha'Zix. And... Given the assumption he did start red, you don't have to worry about contesting. Kha'Zix also going for a 5 camp, skipping Raptors. Much more standard. Yeah. As he's going to hit up the Kha Wolves. Kha'Zix does not like his Raptors, really. Nope, all too cool, though. Getting engaged on here with Exhaust. the Q. Exhaust comes down. Darken has a fourth shot here to keep chipping him down. Deadly Flourish does Ooh. not find its mark, but all too cool. First to burn both of his pots very quickly. I think maybe Jin decides to go with a longsword start there. That might have been a kill, but instead we have boots and four pots. Oh, well, ah, the classic. When in doubt, boots and four pots on the He did come out with the summoner advantage there, getting the heal and exhaust out of the other yep. bot lane. And, and tag needs to be careful, gets tagged. There's a W and MX Xenon allows Darken to grab that first blood kill, and now bot lane. Pretty open wide here. Gonna help push in this lane here. Maybe even get a quick reset off for his AD carry. Of course, all too cool back in her turret. No dragon yet to go, but both these junglers should just be able to handshake the top bot crabs as they so please. Yeah, and it's looking like Kha'Zix is gonna have to just go back here. He doesn't really have any of the gank. Yep, and Definitely Dark. Definitely feels bad. Let's see if Darkin and Radon Crack actually go for the reset here. Radon Crack wants to. Is Finally pushed in, so... Bit of a late reset here. If, yeah, all too cool can stay with Antak and they go right straight to lane here and shove this, they should be able to get a wave in. 
But it looks like they're going to go for Vision Ed anyway, so it should be late reset, not necessarily punished from Darken and Rat on Crack. Should be able to get the lane just fine. And with that, the early lead kind of secured as Mikey Milk just kind of hovering around this mid lane, making sure MX and Rabond can't really do too much to this Malzahar, or Zareth, sorry. Yeah, and Zareth farming under towers is definitely not where you want to be right now. I mean, this is the expectation for the early part of the lane. Malzahar should be able to get pressure, especially if you have your jungle there. That's fine. Yeah, it just does not. Farming under tower does not feel good as a zero. As Moore taking a pretty rough trade here in topside. We'll have to see if any of it actually amounts to anything. Of course, Nas is totally fine as long as he's even in CS with his Mundo. But first dragon spawning here, 17 seconds. Have to see if any of these jungles want to make a run for it. Tempo is in favor of MX so far. He's back out on the map earlier with a reset. Got that pickaxe in inventory, whereas Mikey Milk still kind of lagging a bit on that front. Yeah, and this Mundo does not. It's just going to shove this in. It'd be interesting if he stays here. This should be a pretty easy game. It looks like he is going to back off a bit. Yep. It's not going to back up. I'm trying to keep this pressure on. The longer he keeps letting Nasus in lane without Sheen, probably the better. Uh, that's a strategy I know that some people employ against the champion, where if you can't pressure him completely out of lane, just make sure he can't get that Sheen. As... Yeah, that's, that's when Nasus starts being real annoying. Yeah. He is More la mana limitation here well. on Nasus as well. Yeah, he went with the biscuits, so he does have a little bit more sustain. The stacks are up to 72, which is not bad, considering who he's laning into. No, not bad at all. Again, Mundo, not the most punishing matchup in the world. Not as aggressive as you can get, but still fine. Actually, somehow down an XP. Not really sure how he managed that one. I believe he backed, when he backed off the wave, when I mentioned the possible gank, I believe he went too far and actually left XP. He did take six now as this wave comes through, but interesting deficit we have here is... Not really too much action outside that early Zing gank, and honestly, the gold lead almost made completely back up now. With the growing bot lane CS difference, it's slowly accumulating. Classic fight over control ward and tri bush. Deck your vision. Dark finding does land, but so does the whirlwind. Is all too cool. Gets slowed down a little bit late on the black shield. Looks like Zin wants to come here and help contest this vision. All too cool. Throws out a binding. Shield. He's healthy and Antac gets baited in. Here comes Xenon. Doesn't go down. He's trying to get the kill over to his AD carry. Instead, yep, does succeed. Finally, Dark can grab another one. And once again, the Zin interference and bot lane, the lack of vision, going to be the punish. Yeah, they've got that whole bot side of their full two control wards with the scuttle. Obviously, the mid prio Zareth is. Probably gonna die here now. Oh no, God! Kha'Zix in Oh, big inventory, Kha MX. Flash is away for now. That will just be the flash burn off the Zin. Still far from a useless summoner spell on the champion. That will mean there's probably no attempt at Dragon here for at least a little bit. Uh, actually gonna... Oh, he sees the Morgana on the board. Yep. I'm gonna do anything. Goes in without the W reset, so all too cool gonna go very low, but Antac is here and MX has no support this time. Kill traded back for the Itty Carry. Yep. Greed, greed, greed. Oh, but now all too cool maybe the one overstaying is Rabond. Coming down. Ooh. Doesn't get tagged. Spell immunity means he can keep going forward, decides to back away. And that will be kind of the end of it. We'll lose actually a pretty much full wave here mid lane, so this is gonna be a bit of a punishing roam down. Loses a good bit of a lead there onto Zareth. And now it's actually going to be the side of Gabagool who ends up coming up with the dragon after that exchange. Would have thought it'd go over to Climbing Iron, but with Xin Zhao going a little bit too far on the invade and bot lane deciding to reset instead, did not have the opportunity to pick that one up. So eight minute dragon secured for the side yeah. of Gabagool. Zin with the double grief there. Losing his flash is one thing. The, uh, the attempted 2v1 probably gonna regret that. Yeah, not exactly the greatest of looks. Still far from behind, though. 600 gold game is not by any means over. Mundo still into this Nasus here. More teams doing quite well so far in the 1v1. Nasus has got a half a level lead on this. Yeah, and might actually have uh, some threat here as it's wither into some pretty good damage. Yeah, so more teams actually coming up pretty good in the matchup thus far. 
Maybe a little jungle skirmish. Ooh, MX sees him, but Mikey also sees him on the other side. They're gonna go for the fight anyway. Mundo's gonna be here way earlier than Nathan can get down. Let's we'll see if it's a winning fight. Mikey decides to go out with the ulti. Crescent Guard goes down. They're gonna try to donate over, but Majestic Llama says, No, I don't care about you. Three pointers, Zareth. I'm gonna grab my Cle Cleaver Gill. Thank you very much. Yeah, I probably would have preferred that to go over onto the Zareth, but. Absolutely. I don't think don't think it's such a bad thing that does even out the XP just a little bit for the Mundo. Yep, and MX Xenon, I mean, that's another very greedy invade. Not only because it, it, it's a fine thing to go check and try to clear out vision, but you see the Kha'Zix with the Sweeper. You know he's over the wall. You know he sees you. You're on a control ward. Your Nasus is not rotating nearly as fast as Mundo is at the moment. Mundo's already making his way down. You have to get out. There, that is not an invade you can take. That is not a fight you want to take. Even if you kill Kha'Zix, you are still more or less just putting yourself further in the hole. Yeah, it might be a better trade, but it's high risk, like medium reward. Yep, and now you're now just like a lot of Yep. Red on crack. Dodge away from the binding. Anti still able to get some good damage. That's also cool. Trying to find out an area for the ultimate. Monsoon to push him away, but that's a big bullet time. Heal managed to get him out safely so far. The curtain call comes through. Red on crack though, dying with the flash from Antac. Nothing else going right now as we see it set top lane by directed camera, and it ends up being a one for one support for support. However, Darken does manage to keep his flash through the encounter. Mikey Milkbow might burn that himself. Not oh no! That is that flash burn and kill got an Unky Hawk under assault mid lane now is moored. Taking a bit of damage on his own. This is Lama with that Kha'Zix, with that uh, Zin red buff. He was so kind of dirty. Mikey Moke also finding him out over here on the ward. Goes into ulti, but the suppression comes through. Hungry Hawk isn't in range. Misses the stun, but Mikey Moke oh, surviving the burn. The comet. Oh, all too cool oh. saves the jungle. Refill in the black shield. I'm gonna clutch Top lane, there's going to be a trade here. As flashes out of both. Majestic Lama finally pops his ulti of his own. As all too cool, jumped on. Hungry Hawk hits the damage this time, but gets some malefic visions of defeat. Is MX Xenon continuing forward? Stun lands. There's the Q, the burn. All too cool comes up with the kill, and the support was just not there fast enough. Rat on crack, unable to get another shield off to defend that one. Yeah, the the Zin is kind of falling for the classic trap of just because you are an early game champ does not mean you need to force everything early. Yep, and. I mean, that was a very close margin there on Mikey Moke. That's the uh, the guts saving him out there. But either way, that's a that's a tail that comes up. Very unlucky tails for the side of MX Xenon going down to zero three on the Zin. Kha'Zix trying to make a kill. You're getting gold. Luckily, goes on to Alter Cool, so you're not getting anything on this mid laner, which has been the nice silver lining for most of these uh, failed plays. Is you get kills on tanks, you get kills on AP support. You're not really getting kills on the hype. On the uh, not hyper carry, but hyper damage mid laner that's gonna itemize only damage. Yeah, they're really snowballing. Right on crack, actually, stunned up here is in topside. MX Xenon fighting Mikey Milk. Might be able to get the win here with a knock up in the red smite, but Mikey Milk trying to go for a wafer right up. now. W lands, Rabon's in the area as well. Ulti not able to keep him invisible long enough, and MX Xenon wins the 1v1. Mundo's a little out of position. It might be caught out here. MX Xenon looking forward. Finds a W in. Doesn't have the ultimate just yet, so the Wither actually going to do quite a bit of work here to try to keep this one down. But Zareth ulti coming through, trying to get some damage out of more teams. Looking forward. Taking a tower shot. Zareth not going to inspire out another shot. Instead, he sees Malzahar around. Going to try to push off window here as Radon crack. Blade Block Shield doesn't end up with any follow up. And in top lane, it's just going to be some stuff burn. Big root, though, as the bullet dive comes through. And that's two kills in the bot lane. And tack it all too cool. They find the combo finally. And while Jana and Jin have had the pressure so far, that one good dark binding will secure them two quick kills. Probably some plating gold as well. And that yeah, might be the play to keep them right up in harm. Yep. Still not great vision coming out here from the blue side though, especially in the bot river. Still. Yep, it's a trade. Blue team, second dragon secured. I mean, this is the problem with not getting that first drag after the initial bot side play from. Not initial bot side play, that second follow up bot lane play from Zin early on is you leave that Drake up. Now you're at a third Drake, which, yes, you can give over if you're still not feeling confident to contest. You're 2k gold down. It's. or a k and a half. 
might be a little tricky as all too cool needs to be a little careful here on his lonesome he also traded it for the arrow it's almost 14 minutes yeah yeah but this thing yeah plating's plating's falling yeah it's gabagool so far likely with the advantage here like in the macro plays a little bit more on their side thus far as Majestic and more just i mean this is the top lane we all love and know, know and love it's just two meat sticks beating on each other the whole time walk up punch each other walk away walk yep up, it's the great it's the great the great matchup though Majestic llama will find the other great thing about top lane is you're never in a 1v1 because Inzao coming over for a very late lane game. Might be trying to bait Majestic Llama into something after the ulti's burn. Mord, though, perfectly healthy. I don't think he... Yeah, he doesn't he, 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 did, he didn't dive enough on that one. He, he needed to take more damage to bait Majestic Llama yeah, into following. Yep. That would that have been, been the play. Ooh! Yeah, now he's going to be... I mean, this is a very committed lane gank. This is two waves already up in top lane that you're leeching XP from. You're not farming your camps. You have the whole bot side up, most of top side up, and now just going to reset with the Herald. That's a... Yeah, he can... I mean, he can go for this invade. Zin is very behind in tempo. Does now, yep. Yep. Should be able to get blue here is Antac might get a kill on Rout on Crack. That's Lethality MF. The Monsoon barely Ooh. keeps him alive with the heal. And that will be the bullet time burned off. as MX finds Mikey Milk in the jungle. Goes for a few of the damage. Crescent Guard popped. Didn't get a hit on the Kha'Zix. It's all too cool. Throws the Dark Binding. The Root still lands. The damage just doesn't. And now it's an isolated Kha'Zix versus Zinda with the shield. Oh, the shield. It gets enough through with a flash of the wall. Antac finds the double up for a double kill. Durkin can't get anything more with the curtain call. And it will be a two for one thus far. All too cool. Still looking for Darkin though. As Antac wants to follow this one up with more damage. Sadly, Jin a little bit too safe under that tower. And once again, the 80 carry for Gabagool coming up big. Yeah, he's getting getting real frightening right now. That ult is going to do some massive damage in team fights. Uh, I will give big props here to Hungry Hawk though. He has been all over the rotating from the Zarathar. Range not quite long enough to get to the side lanes. You have to be about halfway down the river. And he has been all over. Yep, those kills actually not even going on Antac, by the way. The double up allowed uh, All Too Cool and Mikey Moke to grab him with the. Uh, Mokron W as well as Kha'Zix W. <laughs> so, fun times there. Fun times. Terrible to get get cool. the kills on, especially because she did go hourglass first here. Yep. We're... So far, we're match. There, they get bubble, bubble box that. Yep. Oh, Zareth did get a kill on that. It wasn't um, it was not Mikey Mother. It was Zareth. Yeah, it's Mr. Lava. Yeah. It's gay. And Maxion really wants to use his Herald topside, which I honestly don't like. Thassus oh, likes this lane thus far. Yeah, might as well just free up as attack. Good Black Shield keeps oh, no. alive, but the binding misses it now. Top lane, Majestic Llama gonna fall down as well. So they will get top lane turret finally. Thassus does manage to grab that kill. Some more teams picking up some gold. Zareth, not sure if he's the best Yeah, they're trying to ward off here. Still have to be careful of the Zin. The Nasus they know doesn't have the flash, doesn't have the ultimate. Yeah, Zin with flash R. Oop, all too cool though. Tagged by the Glacial, right on crack trying to push up, but Antac just does so much damage with the Eclipse at this point, there's no way they can actually walk up and take these fights. Yeah, Jin, Jin's kind of tickling Morgana at this point with the Hourglass as well. Yep. Needs a few more items to come in. Oh, good Dark Binding is... Gonna be a curtain call to try to just buy some space. It's expression on to Zareth, and you are up way too far. Mikey Moe trying to do his camps. Uh, doesn't deign to help the mid laners. He's crescent guarded back under his own mid lane turret with some malefic visions. And that's going to be another kill over the side of Climbing Iron as they try to climb their way back into this game. Now only a thousand. Down is a Gale Force forward. The Q, the kill, the shutdown. As Darkin trying for more. Gets it again off a fourth shot. And that's two kills in the 2v1 for Darkin. Very nicely played, sir. Huge advantage with these enchanted supports right now is a lot of ADCs are taking exhaust themselves. And it makes them just so much stronger in those combat situations than they're by themselves. Yep, and this gives Climbing Iron the chance at Dragon. You still need, you didn't even get the Hourglass used from all too cool is now. 
Mikey Milk wants to contest this. Darkin, though, coming up. Might be the target instead. That's a meaty shutdown. Darkin's down. Mikey Milk gets it without contest. And that will be his little free kill for a trade. Very nicely played. Not going to go for the suicide run. Instead, hey, I got a meaty ADC over here with a little bit of a shutdown bonus. I'll take him for free and get the heck out of dodge. Not a yes, bad but, idea. Ours gold value is fairly even, especially because he fled. Mundo is up here by himself still. Looks like he'll take this tower here. I doubt yep. Nasus can get up here. And with the plays off of Darken, off of MX Xenon, and more teams, gold actually now pretty much dead even. Uh, about yeah. 1,000 coming up here as some waves get pushed in, and the tower goes down top lane, so it does extend a little bit back in the favor of Gabagool, but not too terribly, as it's actually been a teleport in from Rabond to the bot lane. They might be able to try to make a play here with MX Xenon. Yep. Goes over the wall with the blast cone, but the John doesn't follow, so this actually won't really be too impactful. Yeah, I don't. I think Rat on Crack missed the blast cone. <laughs> so teleport bot. I mean, he grabs the waves. So that's total, that's fine, but not exactly too much else. <laughs> yep, needs to try to help out this Mundo Kha'Zix. Whoa, big damage to the Nasus Q. Flashes away, makes him auto attack the Mundo instead. Now Mikey Milk is trying to play harass. He's at the burn of the flash. More teams waiting for that ulti to run out. Getting a lot of healing off of Medistic Llama, who still doesn't have that anti heal. Now Mord able to walk forward. Red Smite's down again. Might want to use it at the beginning of the fight before the healing came through, but hey. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's like a little, little parting shot there. Whatever floats your bloat. And attack down here. First run on crack is. Maybe another zoning as actually no prepping up gank here for mx to come in hungry hawk is dead to the gale force that one's an easy kill all too cool We're trying to run away with the black shield but there's the w another one for it finally decides to use the hourglass mikey milk pushed away maybe back to his death Rook comes through but it might not be enough as this gin does so much damage flashing four grabs one kill four shot available tower with no hp Ooh, w is wide attack coming from behind but he's flanked by Rat on Crack, who now has to be careful. Has to flash away from the Deadly Flourish. Does not want to get tagged and get in the melee range of that Zin Zhao. And lots of summoners burned here from the side of Gabagool. It's climbing Iron pretty much for the first time this game. It's 1,000 gold lead. Yep, and that Nasus is very big right now. He's at 552 stacks at 21 minutes. I'm not a Nasus main, but that just sounds good. That's a good, that's a pretty high number. That's pretty good. Sorry. Now we're just going to get to a little lull state here. Yep. Should be kind of just waiting for this next dragon to spawn in like a minute 55. Probably be the next major objective. I don't think anyone's going to overcommit for the Herald unless... You know, we just feel like fighting mid for fighting's sake. That always happens. Yeah, we could... Honestly, forcing a fight with the Nasseth at this point might not be a bad idea. Yeah, interestingly, going into Gargoyle's Stoneplate as a second item. Not necessarily my first choice on a pick, but will make him quite tanky in team fights. Yeah, I'm not... It's, it's a pretty pricey item. And it's, Ooh! It's definitely good. Nice crit double up there from Mount Talk. Gets darkened down to half HP instantly. Is Mikey Milk sitting off in the wings, waiting for an opportunity. Jana does have the Moonstone in the See the effect up there on the chin. Back up to about 3 4 health. Now, just kind of the waiting game. Junglers hovering around mid lane, make sure nothing goes awry. Of course, mid lane tier 1 still available for climbing iron, so they have. All the push advantage they could want with the safety afforded. 45 seconds of Drake. Looking for Climbing Iron to go in and start doing their setup. Instead, it looks like it's going to be a late reset for MX Xenon. Going to try not to run back down this Drake. And not a lot of vision expended by either team in the area of the Dragon Pit. Yeah, it's kind of just a... Dark and dangerous world. Completely blind. Yeah, I'm gonna need to force out a very late reset from Antac with 20 seconds left to do. Okay, does cancel it. Probably for the better, even if you have gold to spend. Yeah, it has a thousand gold, but you need to do that way early as Rabond. Pops a ward, but should be pretty safe here. Zareth burns the black 
shield, but now Antax stepping up, has to be careful as MXD on in the area. W Sport, he's got the ADC cut out, and that's the first kill to blow her open. Hungry Hawk lands his land of sun as Morgan trying to come in from the side, doesn't find the dark fighting as the I mean he takes him, but right on crack going very low. The monsoon to keep him healthy. Also cool flashing forward though, finds stun on the two. But this Lama coming on the backside is Daryl Ulti finally goes out, hitting multiple members, doing so much damage, but it's just not enough to kill any individual member. Flash forward, suppression onto the Kazakh Mikey Milk. Nowhere to go. He falls down. MX Xenon grabs another one on a killing spree. Urban going very low. Hunger Rock actually doing a good bit of damage, but there is a deadly flourish. There's another kill. The flash doesn't do nothing. And all two cools. The last one left to watch nice. the teacher turn up. And Darkin, no! He falls down. <laughs> <laughs> the Morgana W, it's a shutdown, MX Zenon as well! Oh! Ooh, triumph to save the day. Triumph and Moonstone coming into the clutch there. Either way, they managed to win the fight. The positioning, not good from the side of Gabagool. The ADC way too far up without much support. Everyone caught in that small little choke. And now it is going to be Climbing Iron to grab their second Drake of the game. While that Drake really doesn't mean too much in the grand scheme of things, as Gabagool did get the, the first two. The team fight with the gold, the pressure, the tier two tower bot. You're now looking at a 4k plus gold lead, and that is worth every penny. Yeah, really, the big difference here has been the vision in that bot side river. It really feels like uh, blue side has not been attempting to ward that much. Uh, not in any extensive amount, or at least clearing it. I do believe yeah. a fair bit of that vision was put up as the Drake spawn, which is something. I mean, this is something that when you look at PSU LCS teams, this is when you're. This is how the one of the easiest ways to separate your really really good teams from your middle teams and your like low end teams is how they run their vision control around objectives. Really really good teams, you're gonna see like around the minute 30 to minute mark around Drake, they will have already taken their resets. They're already working their way back out on the map, and they are as a team coming in, clearing out the vision, and then putting down their own. That is a very good macro play. They're set up for the Drake. And again, this if they want to contest. If they don't want to contest, they can do whatever they want. But Antac, I'll just pause. He's grabbed out mid lane. Blade Black Shield not going to do too much. Is Rat on Crack trying to cut away. Big damage. But the Kha'Zix is in behind. And Rat on Crack is down. Darken now has him flash away. But the Kha'Zix still pursuing the W. Lands. That's a double kill for the GBG jungle. And McZenon might try to make it a 1 for 2, however, with his mid laner coming down. Ultra Cool trying to heal up off of some plants they see him on the ward here hungry hawk as well coming up to ward off the Kha'Zix as the split push Nasus continues and maybe this is the area where you'd rather see the hall breaker on this champion yeah if he had hall breaker over stone plate right now this would yeah, if you're gonna keep him in the side lane you might as well give him the item to yeah. win it especially if you're gonna take TP like that yeah I mean the gargoyles is the gargoyles is great for some team fighting prowess but I mean you are ruling the side lane buddy you are top dog in that regard this game they have total control of Botside River, and actually Baron being up on the map, this is a little bit of an opportunity here. Once it, yeah, they have the vision on Zinzao, so GBG can actually push out this mid wave and then try to rotate up to a topside towards their AD carry and try to clear out a lot of this Baron vision in the pit and really force um, Climate Iron to like come up and check that. You have instead bot lane kind of stable. Yeah, yeah instead we're gonna try to like help out Mundo with his Nasus and some Morgana. This is not necessarily gonna be the greatest of plays. Mundo does have Grievous now, but all too cool might die before it even comes off. Great binding as the Krugs spawn behind them, and now MX Xenon here for the sport. Exhaust comes down, but it's not gonna be anywhere near enough to keep all too cool alive. Oh. But Lama finds the proc, it's not gonna have the Zareth Ulti not even in range. This is their big gonna play mid lane. Rabonda trying to kill away from Mikey Milk. The shields are enough. The heals. He's not going down. Finally falls. Bot lane still. The 2v2 is another one joins the fray. Jin, though, Gale forcing in the mid to grab another one. Hungry Hawk now trying to find his way to run on crack, but it's a curtain call for him. Set back to the bound. Antac cannot get away from the NAS as the double up not enough, and that's going to be an easy ace for the side of climbing iron. And with only one going down, Rabon in mid lane, who lived way longer he had any right to. They're going to boost their gold up to 5k, make it some more as this mid lane tier 2 bound to fall. And they have all the priority they could ever ask for on Baron and this Nest Dragon in two minutes' time. That was a, that was a chaotic fight there. Not often you get to see the cross bat at least going on. Yeah, I mean, you had two. I'm not sure what the idea was bot lane there from Gabagool. That was... In no way is that ever going to succeed with Morgana with Morgana Mundo. If Morgana's there for any reason, it's to get 
the Nasus off the Mundo and get in and like buy space by time without anyone dying, but there's no way you ever all in there. Yeah, she doesn't have the Andres yet, so she can't even burn them down. There's no way that's ever, ever going in there. And I've got an 800 stack Nasus. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of stacks. Quite a lot of stacks. control is being set up here on top side. Yep. About 6k in the lead now. Full priority over Baron here. You can see all the vision they're putting down, making sure they have to force Gabagool to come in and test them. And yeah, Baron's the call. They got the pings on it. Gab Gabagool is all down by this Baron. Gabagool's thinking about Dragon. They're not even thinking about well, they not it's not actually them. a it's not a bad move. If you just want to set up dragon and try to bait out the next fight with the Baron, if you force them to the dragon, it's not gonna mean very much, but it doesn't look like they even really want the dragon, they just don't know what's going on. They don't know the Baron is under threat. And now the Baron's down, now they're not even set up for the dragon. They have the vision, sure, but they're not there to defend it. I think if you know they're on Baron, it's very Yeah, now they're in a race now they're gonna lose the mid priority. And be forced out of their own vision. This is just John is just up top helping push. Yeah, I mean Majestic Llama's caught out now. More teams can't do any wrong here in this fight. And now Botlin, the fight starts out because Blue was out of position. Morgana coming in. Mikey Mill trying to get dark and does grab the shutdown, which is huge. Bot lane, Majestic Llama living for about as long as he can, but that's all he's gonna really get. Finally falls down as Aerith. Not really doing any damage. The pressure comes on to Mikey Mill. They finally get the kill. It ends up being a two for three, which normally benefits the side of Gabagool, but they're gonna lose an inhibitor bot side for it. More teams can still keep pushing with Rat on and Crack. A wave. I mean, Antag almost has to just bullet time this to kill it. They're gonna grab mid lane tier two as well. The only silver line for Gabagool here is it kills. They come back in a little bit there, but they're gonna grab a dragon and at least stall out Soul Point enough. But yeah, another mid lane inhibitor going to fall. And the gold lead just keeps growing. You're up to 7,000 gold in the lead as more teams. Pretty much invincible now without help. I mean, someone with Grievous Wounds has to be in the area. Antac is going lethality. He does no damage to the Nasus. Nasus does get a ward down near their base. Could TP back in here. As well. nah, I would be shocked if he TP'd in on that ward. There's just, just no reason. Her. A little later on here if they're i mean if they're being stupid and push out here look at this full vision control on their top side jungle though yep mikey mill coming in to clear some of it out before going back to his wolves in the meantime we should be a bit more of a lost state no baron up ocean dragon's there there's only two members of climbing iron who still have the baron one of them being very importantly more cheese the other one is right on crack so Baron, I mean, they get their worth for it. They get top lane tier two, they get two inhibitors, two inhibitor turrets. It's a very worthwhile Baron by all means, but should be able to stall the rest of it out here and kind of force themselves into a farming position where Antac and especially Hungry Hawk get some more gold, get some more items and try to get to another break point before this next dragon spawns. Give themselves a little bit more of a fighting chance yeah, uh, right now, as you go later no on this game. Get picked before drag. Yeah, and really, the nice thing about DBG in this state is they can give another drag. They can give they can give another drag in here and not be too worried about it. Nasus can see. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure they're not pausing the game or anything, so we'll see how what that's about. Man, Nasus did DC. A whole lot more interesting. Yep, oops, sudden lands here. Reconnect on the Nasus. MX Xeno gonna take a little bit of chip damage, but should be relatively okay. Right on crack. Stun on to all too cool. Re-engage the look. Not gonna take it. Exercise in restraint. Nasus did come back. Yep, just a momentary blip. Happens. Wi-Fi is not always the best medium for online play. Especially if you're on Penn State campus. Very true, very true. And now, uh, yep, it's gonna be a farming position and again. Nice position to be in here is Mikey Milk looking for Darkin. I you interesting jump, interesting flash, but and now, yeah, I'm not sure what the plan is here with Majestic Llama. The Baron isn't up for two minutes. We're just hanging out.
Morgana is taking a lot of farm. Three people to try to kill masses. Yeah. Uh, probably not gonna work. Probably just gonna walk away. More teams. Pretty safe at this point on his lonesome. Has spear yeah, misses as well now. And so many people talk now that he's in, and now he's just gonna come down here and push this in. Yep. Just gonna push it back in. Like you can see the two wave sync, you have Nasus pressuring the top one, pressure the bot line as well with two other members that have a lot of good pressure. Uh, as well as forcing in the mid. This is not necessarily synced waves, which would be the ideal. But Rabon may be in trouble as Flash 4 Rabon is dead. Flash away will give him some time, but now Mikey Milk has a chance to revert on to Xenon inside. Nexus yeah, Nexus though under siege. Majestic Llama cannot contest. And yep, this Nexus is gone. One more, two more objects He's should do it. More teams. Nope. He's full HP, and that should just be the game. He's going to do a little dance. A little PM. They actually just can't kill him. It's not possible. They don't do damage to this guy. He is healing off of them hurting him. I mean, that's a full Xerath combo. That wasn't even a fourth in hell. Yeah, I mean, the guy is just huge at this point. Oh, <laughs> nice barrier to uh, kind of stall it out. Oh, Good tank mountains. Just for, just for fun. Still just hanging out in the background. Gotta try to do some KDA padding here. That As Majestic Llama. He yeah, he, he, he's not taking damage. He, they, they, no one does damage to Oh, there finally dies a tower. Darken will end the game instead. And that will be a 1-0 here lead for Climbing Iron. After what was a pretty rough early game to start out with, besides some early Zin ganks, uh, the jungle mishaps end up getting brought back. Top lane goes ludicrously in favor of them. And they will take the first game with a quite comfortable 7k gold lead. It was it was definitely a fun game to watch. As weird as the draft was, that was definitely yeah, very odd. Draft. Still players. very odd teams in general. Very strange teams. But you know what? We like a little spiciness here. Yeah, it was definitely an interesting one to say the least. And we'll be back here for probably game two. I mean, a lot to think about again. It's not like it wasn't all doom and gloom from Gabagol. They actually played the early game quite well around the mistakes that Climbing Iron made initially. Uh, they punished the, jung the jungle overextensions. They got early dragons when they, when some instances they really didn't have, shouldn't have had the opportunity to. Uh, the other team just kind of gave them a window, and they were up enough to take it. They had some pretty decent macro early on. So, yeah, I mean, overall, it was, it was really... the early game was pretty it was pretty okay. Yeah, it was just the vision not being ready for Dragon. Really, if they would have gotten just one more of those Dragons, yeah. they could have had Soul at that point. That's obviously a big change. And that you can't let Nasus free farm like that. You have to have some way to punish him. Yeah, unfortunately, the, top, the bleeding top and then the misposition in the one Dragon fight is what ended up really being the, the uh, kind of straw that broke the camel's back. Um misfortune a little bit too far forward gets caught all your team's damage is suddenly gone there can't physically kill all these guys by himself uh nasus is already fed and you just kind of get this rolling snowball of nothing's able to happen and yeah, with I'm that gonna say, i'm gonna yeah. say there'll be a nasus ban this next game i'd be surprised that there wasn't maybe not first round but we might see it you know as we get into the session as we get into the uh the next hopefully just one draft we'll see have my hopes up i think i think we'll go two again Ah, don't, 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 don't get my hopes up. Uh, <laughs> in any event, we'll be back here in just a few minutes for game two. Until then, catch you guys later.
All right, hello guys, welcome back. Thank you for waiting for us a little bit. We're gonna be getting into game two draft here. So far, Climbing Iron leading 1-0 uh, over Gabagool. Gonna look to see if there's any draft adjustments. What's gonna change here as we get into game two, picks and bans. Hopefully we're gonna get a ban. Maybe, we'll see. Climbing Iron not known exactly so far this season for their yeah, but quick banning. Not off to a great start, but... Not the greatest. Did they ban anything uh, yet? And nope. it's a no-ban. Okay. They have asked who bans first. Uh, We're asking. They're probably just going to restart the draft because it's first... Oh, yay, yay. Or we're just going to keep going. Yep, it looks like we're just going to keep going. As long as they know who the ban is, it's fine. Yeah, hopefully they just put ban in here, the lobby chat before. That would be picks. nice. They're going to ban Vayne on too, which is fine. Zach. Zach is... Zach is ban one. one. Okay. Sick. That would make sense. Getting there. Twitch can be banned on two. Again, making sense. You have a Twitch one trick in support. Morgana can be banned away third there this time. It looks yeah, like, yep, Gavagul will not deal with Anastas again. They do not seem to have an answer for that one. So we are just going to ban it away. Fair enough. Okay, why draft around it when you can just ban it? True. And now Jin can be first picked by Climbing Iron. Again, you have the Jinx answer here. We didn't see it last game, but Jinx is a very good answer here uh, that has been left up and available if uh, Antac wants to play it. Scales absolutely amazingly into the late game. Fairly solid early game. Mm. Gonna go aggressive, though, on the Tristana. Okay. Gonna try to kill this Jin, put him out of it early. Obviously, uh, she just got some buffs last week. A little bit tankier in the early game. Yeah, and I mean, this is also another champion that scales extremely well in the late game. Has a little bit of a mid-game drop if she doesn't get ahead um, until she gets that attack range. But her early game can be very potent. It's one of the reasons we saw her in the last few seasons being played so much as a solo laner. It's because of her all-in potential just so high, and I'd like to see that paired with a little bit more of aggressive support than Lulu, but yeah. it's Lulu that we will get. That, I would have switched supports there for them, honestly. I would have done Leona with the, Leona with the Trist. Yep, Ooh. Nunu and Willump as well. Gonna be hovered, maybe locked in? I like the Leona, oh, yeah. and yeah, it's gonna be Nunu and Willump on three, so Climbing Iron going with a very ease of execution style comp here. Very easy. Yep. Hit with CC and kill him with, kill him with the 80 carry and some damage. That's so. We need to technically Nunu can be flex mid. I'm assuming it's going in the jungle. That's the uh, preferred area for most Nunus. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get any uh, anyone trying to copy yep. Faker over here. And we are gonna get a Mumu locked in here for Gabagool. Assuming thus far answer into the new level, so we can see some very interesting flexing between the Lulu and the Mumu. Mm -hmm. Lulu top and Lulu support. Yeah, yeah. Lulu mid. Like, there's there's some real crazy stuff you can pull off. Instead, they're going to ban away some of the mids, try to pinch out that roll next with the Katarina hitting the bench. Uh, looks like they're going to ban away. If they're looking to ban away artillery mages, Malzahar might not be a bad ban to follow up with. It takes away a lot of safety in mid lane. takes away a lot of setup for a lot of these champions. Not that you really need it when you have Leona and Nunu and Mump, but could be an option. It's also just if you're planning to have the Jin as a solo carry here. Malzahar, obviously, good one to get rid of just so you don't have to deal with him barring. Aatrox ban yep. again. Yeah, ban away that top lane Aatrox. Shen taken away as well, so just trying to take away. I'm guessing Comfort. Uh, this is probably OP yeah. G scouting we're seeing at this point. But up to R4 here. We've got to blind something or reveal one of the flexes if you're going to do it. So Gabagool making their choice carefully. It looks like, yep, he's going to go with a safety. They are mid, which is significantly more blindable than it has been in the past, but quite strong. 
I mean, technically, it's still a flex. <laughs> we're not uh, at this point. We're not flexing anymore. <laughs> we're, we're done. We're done flexing. No, I, I, I highly doubt it. Ooh, Ooh this should be an older counter matchup. The Vladimir and mm -hmm. Vagar. Very interesting. Not something we see very often either with popularity right now, but can be very potent to Vagar with the ability just to, you know, go through the cage and immune a lot of the damage that Vagar likes to put out as a burst combo. Yeah, and Vlad has some really nice damage right now. He's really benefited from the mage item buffs. Yep, absolutely. And now we got one more pick here coming in for Climbing Iron around their composition. Looking for a top laner. I mean, with how good it went last time. Yep, going to go for a lane bully, and that's going to be the Gnar. Now, Gabagool, one more pick up here. See what they elect to go with. R5, R5, you have counterpick top lane. It is a NAR top. You can look. There's a Malphite is an option here if you want to go for like an engaged tank. Uh, so I that this um, team kind of looks at it. Okay! Blue has, Blue has said they are playing Malkai, not NAR. Uh, see, and Red has agreed to that. That was a bit <laughs> suspect because Pro Draft doesn't auto lock champions, so they had to click. They had to. Yes, they, they had, had to, to click, click the Nar and first. And Nar is not exactly close to Malkai on the. Never mind. He'll play Nar. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll see if it's a Nar or a Malkai. But Pantheon is definitely locked in on R five for Gabagool. Uh. Climbing Iron might have a few, uh, might have a few draft things to work out this week. Yep. <sighs> a little bit of decisiveness is in order. But we are readying up for actually drafting again. Gabagool kind of having this uh, all the, all over everywhere comp again that I'm not a huge fan of. A lot of parts that don't like working together. Yeah, individually, I think they're all good champs i'm not sure about the interplay there especially i am not a big fan of the trist lulu yep it's gonna be a little interesting here and then uh, climbing iron actually even with the nar maokai mix-up which should be nar notably yes should be the nar uh actually is a very well-rounded, I think, team you have here. You have tons of negates with Nunu and Leona, and even Nar to a degree, although Nar, I believe, is more going to be a follow-up here. You have strong lanes. Jin Leona is a very strong lane in terms of pressure availability. Uh, more out of the early levels, Jin's going to struggle against Tristana, but once you get to like, that one item point, very strong. Vladimir has decent matchup into Vagar, post, like, again, the first few minutes where you're kind of looking for some of that CDR. Once he gets going, we'll be able to deal, especially post-6, Vagar very easily. And then while I'm not super familiar on the Nar Pantheon matchup, Nar just in general, very strong top laner. You have the range. If Pantheon ever gets on top of him in mini Nar, it is going to be problematic. Uh, yeah, I that's think, that's going to be Pantheon the biggest thing. To get on top of him. Yep. If Pantheon gets along it's ahead early, it might be a bit of a trouble, but Nar should be able to play that lane relatively safely. Overall, as Pantheon, as the game goes on, is going to really decrease in value very quickly. Yeah, it's not going to be a gradual decline. No, he's he's pretty much, he can one-shot people at an item, and then after that, he's just going to... If just Unless he's fed. I mean, here. people getting fed here is... That, that, that becomes... That, that is... Uh, that eclipses matchup. When someone is 9-1, and one, it eclipses what you expect the champion to actually be able to do yes. at a certain point in the game. Uh, it's just how it works. Like, Pantheon will one-shot... Or, like, very quickly kill tanks when he has, like, 10 and 1 and the tank is 0 and 8. That's just how it works. But we'll be Majestic Llama piling that one again. And a little bit interesting, we see on something like the Pantheon after the matchup last game did get, well, I'm not going to say diffed, as most of the solo queue would go. Definitely a hard winning top for Mord. Mord yeah. teams in last one played the Nasus extremely well. Of course, it did get quite a bit of help from M MX Zenon. Yeah, he was definitely playing weak side last game. See if they actually it is the Nar and the Pantheon. Uh, I tried to look up a little bit of matchup numbers on that, and it is played so little into each other. There is no data. 
Yeah, Pantheon, you don't see him top very much. He's not something you really see top lane. It's just no. not like his thing anymore. <laughs> he's got easy. He kind of bounces around. He doesn't really have a great place right now, but still can get some work done if you're good enough at him. And no one, uh, the big thing with him mid lane, and especially in support, is like roam timings are huge on the champion because your gank setup is brain dead. Uh, you jump in with W, stun someone, and generally you set up whatever you need to. That's why Talia Pantheon was so popular even before the rework in some yeah, cases, he, but we'll be interested to see how this goes. That, he has benefited a bit from the TP changes. His ult is a little more value. It's kind of a budget Shen, if you want to think of him that way. Uh, in some regards, yeah. I mean, Gabagool is going to have a bit of an interesting time in this game just with how their composition works. Their top lane is a complete question mark in terms of whether it's going to be useful or an absolute dead weight. Uh, but yeah. the one thing that's kind of interesting is normally when you see Tristana, you're looking for like a go in, get like really big dive comp. Because uh, your AD carry can follow up, you know, get resets, continue to push this fight forward with a lot of high damage champions. And like Tristana and Pantheon fit that bill very, very well. But then you have stuff like the Lulu and the Vagar, and the Amumu can really do both of these things to some regard, so I put it more on the middle ground. But like a lot of these like peel back, let us let them come into us kind of champions. Vagar, great. Some of the best zoning in the entire game with the um with the horizon's edge, his E. Yep. That oh, is out. such a great. That is such Gold great zoning. Gobble's uh. playing a little TFT. They're going for Yordles. <laughs> Got Yordles and a shirtless. Oh guy. no! It's a TFT buff. Well, we all saw the the show match one year. I can't remember who it was against. Where a glacial just straight up won. Oh yeah, an actual show match. It was like Sejuani, Ash, Brom. It's the Frail Yord. Yeah, right? Frail Yord. I don't even remember what else, but... It pays to know lore. <laughs> We're certainly set up for an instant game. In team fights, I am really liking the amount of options that Climbing Iron has this game. They have tons of both non-committal and committal engage they can use. There shouldn't be lacking in any of damage, given that more Chiefs doesn't fall too far behind, and MX Xenon isn't too far behind in the jungle. As long as they're at an even or better standpoint, they will be more than good. Whereas looking on Gabagool, they have tons of high damage burst champions between Tristana, Vagar, and Pantheon that can really just blow Squishy up if they get caught out by a stun, CC, whatnot. They have very good like peelback in Vagar and Lulu, as well as Amumu if he uses his tools like Bandage Toss, as well as Curse the Sad Mummy defensively, can be really strong. Uh, if you have like three people diving on you, just immediately pop that stun, really blow for a counter engage. Uh, that can be great for your team. Uh, and yeah, then wild growth and of get off me type champs. Yeah, my only concern with Gabagool specifically is they have a lot of mixed, it, for lack of better terminology, in terms of like how LS goes, they're they're like different colors. You have some really aggressive champions that want to be able to jump in, get resets, continue to get like chain kills together and stuff like that with Tristan and Pantheon, and to a degree a Mumu. And then you have a lot of champions that like to have the enemy come into you to play pro to play like reactively off of engage and counter. And stuff like that. So it's going to be, I think, a little bit harder to put the pieces together in certain scenarios. And I also think they have a lot less versatility with, if they want to pick a fight, you're really just banking off a Mumu or Pantheon just Leroy Jenkins it into the middle of the entire yeah. enemy team, which isn't necessarily the greatest option uh, if it doesn't work out. And then, of course, you do have follow-up with the Vagar, with the Lulu, with the Tristana, but a lot... It's going to take some work to set up. You're going to have to get yeah. a bandage toss. You're going to have to, like, be in a position where you can follow up on that Amumu engage. Whereas, I mean, CI can literally just say, I'm just going to snowball into this dragon pit and we're going to see yeah, what happens. Got, or Solar Flare. or range, basically. Yeah, Solar Flare. And then you have Jin to follow up with any of his tools. He can pop um, Curtain Call. Then you can pull Engage after you have like the disorientation with the slows coming through and the damage. There's a lot of like different tools you have on CI to kick stuff off. So they're going to be able to pick fights on their terms. And that's, while well, they have significantly less peelback potential, if... Amumu, if Mikey Milk, if Majestic Llama can like get something going to just kick off a fight, it's gonna be a lot harder for CI to deal with. Um, more teams, this is probably some of the best peelback that they have right now going for them. But it's gonna yeah, be I mean, it's gonna be an interesting game. It's gonna be a very interesting game to see play. I'm much more excited for this game than I was for Game One. Uh, look at the drafts. These are two comps that I'm actually really interested to see like how these teams want to play them. Because again, yeah, they make we could, a little more sense. Yeah. We could get... Some, they have a game plan. 
That's the thing. I was like, if you look at the teams last time, the teams last time, that is a solo queue game. Like, people are just Absolutely. picking champions they yes. like to play, which is fine. But when you get these 5v5 scenarios and the competitive aspect, I want to see you have a game plan when you come to the Rift. Like, hey, this is our win condition. This is what we're going to accomplish. Yeah, take advantage of your comms. Yeah, and it's not necessarily totally dependent on you just smashing every lane apart. And uh, that's what we have in this game. So we are actually loaded on in. So we head on over here. Into the start of game two, CI looking for a 2-0 to start off. Their split would be a pretty big opener for this squad. Whereas Gabagool looking to make it a 1-1 and keep themselves in that middling ground. 1-1s, you take those, you take any min any wins you can get in this league. But I have to see how this one plays out. Both these teams, significantly different game plans from the first time around. Very interested to see how this one goes out. I like it when teams have game plans. I like it when they have obvious, like, this is how we win the game kind of scenarios. This is how we should play fights, stuff like that. Um, of course, we still could get the very disappointing. Someone just blows the other team out. In, like, laning phase, it's, you know, 10k <laughs> gold at 20 minutes. <laughs> Call Cal's boosters. But, um, hey, we might get a very, very interesting late game, like, team fighting. Very dynamic uh, style of League of Legends, which is the ones that are fun to watch. So Yeah, Yordle buff, obviously, though. Yordle buff is a late <laughs> game buff. Gotta roll pretty hard for that Vagar. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, I guess you don't roll. He just shows up, but... More or less... Either way, going to be bot side sides for both the junglers to start out. So should be actually both going for that top side scuttle early, unless we see some interesting pathing going on for you from Denon or Mikey Milk. It'd be interesting to see a new new can take buff and just go W second and roll in the mid and really just annoy the Vagar. I... You realistically do not lose that much off that, but it looks like he's going to... Yeah, full clear is... Sign oh, we might see a level 2. Oh, this is going to be a level 2 bot lane. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here we go. Zenon coming in with the snowball. They're all happening. And that's two Double flash. flashes. Oh, the Jin W oh. stun. It's a stun. It's a lockdown. The shield. The heals. Oh, the ignite takes down. It. It's first blood to rat on crack. Now, that is why you pick a new new. You asked and he's just going to walk in, press Q, and smite something and be in full health. You asked for the Moo Moo level 2, but we're getting the new new level 2, and it might, he might... Okay, he's going for Raptors. I was saying, two level, two gigs on level 2 is a little bit too much. Uh, please get some farm, get some XP, but that is a huge win for their bot lane. Of course, gold, unfortunately, going out of the Leona, but hey, that is Tristana losing a ton of XP uh, that she could have gotten. It's getting the early gold. It's winning the early bot lane for your engage lane, which makes it so much more scary when they're not getting the poke off that they won. And you have no sums now. I mean, yep. no subs available on you the bot side. You did already? Yeah, can just go for a transition gank here as he goes to the top side. Again, he is sacrificing a lot of clear for this. Mikey Milk kind of just getting a, full, a free full clear in terms of the jungle. Uh, so he probably can get the first crab still after he does these trugs and be like relatively okay in pace depending on what Nunu decides to do. Top lane, more teams going for a trade here in a Magician Llama. Has the Mega so just absolutely crushes it. Not even close. Has two yeah, level advantage. Two right wow. Now. That's impressive that early. He yeah, TP, so really was interesting. Ooh, right on crack. It's engaged bot lane, though. Ooh. Fortunately, W from Dark and Jess going to go a little bit wide. Nunu and Amumu meet themselves in the bot crab. Amumu is just going to yield that one over despite being level ahead. Uh, doesn't have the mid prio. So we'll just back off for now. Not going to take that contest. Um, probably should just go for the reset here, honestly, unless he wants to try for a weird gank mid. Uh, reset's looking yeah, really good. Yeah, he goes for the gank, but again, once Vladimir gets pulled, that is just not something that should happen. Yeah, he's so. pretty much going to have to look top or bot. Yep, he's going to just go for the bot grab and then probably end up resetting with his camps all being down. So, not a bad start for the Amumu. Normally, first clear is like the part where you have to be the most careful, but... Is about two camps ahead on Nunu. Uh, should like have most of it. Oh, yeah, go for it. Back here, there's no ward there. It's a little bit risky. One. Darken might actually walk the ward there. I think they're expecting the kind of the gank. They saw the ward. Yeah, they saw him on that bush ward there. Uh, walking down. So, I mean, this is uh, a, yep. a kind of a time waste here for Mikey. Would have liked to see him take the reset and get some early tempo over the Nunu. But now Nunu, fir first to back, grab the dark seal and boots. Feeling very good. Yeah, and the Dar got the Doran's blade to go wrong with the Doran's shield here with that early back. Yep. And didn't have to burn his TP, just walk back. Didn't lose anything. 
Okay. Now, all too cool. And attack. Able to get a little bit of priority on lane. This is more like the... When you don't have engage, when you don't have burst potential, it is a little bit harder to kick stuff off against the Lulu. Yeah, she's... Tristana is still very dangerous as well as... Uh, yeah, Panther does no damage. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, and, uh, and the Doran shield procs, and he's just going to heal back up. Yes, yeah, so this lane, uh, not looking great for Pantheon. We were a little bit interested to see how this would play out. Does not look great, as, uh... Really doesn't look great. <laughs> Ooh, Rabon, though, in trouble. Got Hasn't him. used pool yet. Finally, has him, but that second bandage shot's come up. Oh, smart to flash. Smart to flash. Smart to flash there. Gets behind the minion. Ensures that he's not going to get CC'd again. Not. Very good. Coming to mid. Is he a mana for a cage? Uh, he is mana for the flash. If we're going to set top side to this random fight, I'm going to go back to mid real quick. Okay, cool. Top lane. Pretty good trade, actually, for Majestic. Might have had him with the Ignite. It would have been close if he'd get another auto attack off there, but... Out of the way, can just wait for Zenon to come. Flash forward though, has the ignite, pops it down, but he can't get around the minions. Oh, oh. The, the level up as well. Oh no. And the Pantheon lane is uber doom. That was the last oh, hope so really was to get that. that. Was, uh, oh, it's uber doomed. Ooh, and oh, and six for Rabon mid lane as well. I mean, this they are just going to have a tougher and tougher time, especially without Flash not dying to Vladimir. And that would definitely be an interesting so far. Yeah, game's been very well in the favor of Climbing Iron. Playing this early game significantly better. I think Zenon looking a lot better on the Nunu than the Zenzao. Good for random inmates. Is down 20 CS. Uh, kind of going for this like chain ganking thing. Just trying to apply as much pressure on the round map as possible. And so far working out quite well between his lanes. But <laughs> is going to be down quite a bit of XP. Yeah, he is up. They are up 1,100 gold, so he's definitely making it worth overall. So far, again, this is one of those things where it's kind of like that, uh, will the investment actually have a return? Or if his lanes continue to snowball and get further and further and further ahead, we're looking specifically, I think, a lot of bot lane for that. Because yeah. um, mid lane really hasn't had many ganks set up for it. Burn the flash off Vagar, but that's about it. If I can get a kill on that, then yeah, the investment's great. But... Not having a ton of impact. Rabon, though, does land in the, get in the stun cage. Not going to get too much and can't sustain his Yuna's way back go up. mid again. Uh, yeah, knows Hungry Hawk doesn't flash. No event horizon yet. Big R is just dead. That's Ignite down. Pops a W, but... And the ulti it gets basically a little bit closer, but Rabon comfortably secures that kill. We'll heal up off the ultimate afterwards as the proc finalizes. So you just can't be that far up as Vagar there. Yeah, if you don't, as soon as you burn the event horizon, you are not safe. And now more teams looking for an end into a very big wave here from Majestic Llama. Grabs the ultimate as well. Very nice nicely done. Has to wait out the Pantheon E. Grabs another Q. Another auto attack. W will do it. And that is a easy solo kill for more teams. The tabbies means yeah. he takes literally no damage from Pantheon, who is going with a phage start, mind you. So Mikey Milk. Mid lane. Rabon. Should be okay here. Just pops the ultimate, so Chris, that may Oh, he bandage tosses the he's not. Rabon. No flash. The bandage toss manages to grab the kill. That is a follow-up kind of half solo kill for the Amumu. So at least get something back on the map. That is a first kill on the board for Gabba Ghoul. Mikey Milk making it happen. Oop. Starfall top side, but Llama looking for the kill. Levels here. Yeah, I don't the Nar has speed boost, so this really doesn't matter. Yeah, that's Nar is just kind gonna of, reset. <laughs> kind of more of an ult to lane than anything. Yep, that's uh, that's, that's that's what you take instead of teleport now. <laughs> that's your teleport now. By the way, getting around here to nine minutes. No one really going for the dragon yet. Both teams having some form of vision in the area. You have crab here for the side of CI, whereas GBG just has some control wards flying around, just trying to keep some river vision. Neon uh, is gonna get those. Yep, just trying to start clearing it out. Or nope. Uh, was a little scared of the bot lane rotating worried, over. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, fair enough. Vagar's... Mumu's headed that way, but he yeah. did show in mid. And here's the thing. We might see a little problem here. Is this bot lane might get engaged on. Not a lot of options. Then the play does go wide. Trying to go with the snowball. And Antac jumping on. And Dark and the sun comes through. As well as the solar flare. Antac going very low. Dark and looking for the finish off. But a big event hard as it fights three people. Red attack with the oh, down. Get him with the ult. 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 Ult.
and Darkin kiting away from the Amumu. The snowball going wide. Mikey Milky goes over, but there's a deadly flourish. Here comes the curtain call, and Mikey Milky got nowhere left to go. It's a triple kill for the Nunu and Willem, and holy moly, CI is just running away for this early game. The Vagar ulted the Leona, and the Leona just lived and got on top of him. He couldn't move. Yep, legitimately could not move at all. I mean, that's the thing is you have that weird option of engage where Mumu couldn't find the priority target. Antac tried to make the play happen himself onto the enemy AD carry. And really, even with the huge event horizon from Hungry Hawk, not able to finish off anyone in that fight. Yeah, I mean, that's just massive win for the side of CI. This yeah, is... we saw the issue with the Trist wanting to get in there. This is a runaway early game. 4k in the gold lead. Majestic Llama is getting absolutely dumpstered in top. It's not even remotely close. Almost 30 CS up he for more teams. Here. Oh, absolutely. He's. I mean, more teams is just waiting as Hungry Hawk has to burn flash again. Does get an event horizon onto the Vladimir, but misses everything afterwards. I think it was a little bit, uh, too many targets to choose from with the two. As, yeah, I mean, this is just... This just hurts a lot. Yeah. Oh, Renard might have gone a little bit too far, but the beast. He come back. Yep, it's gonna flash on an. Oh no! Definitely went too far well, this man. time. He's gonna get the shutdown over. Yeah, the flash was a little bit much. That's a oh, very big trade. Kill. Yep, that's a very big trade kill for the side of Majestic Llama, getting a huge payoff actually for that one. He unfortunately does die there. If he didn't die, that would be. Oh, that's uh, you take you take that man. You're down. Oh, you're you're going down. 3 anyway. I mean, you take whatever you get. Is now engaged here. Good wild growth to buy some time. And Dag dodges away from the solar player. Now has to jump on a darken Buster shot available, but the stun is there, and that's just too much damage. Lulu finally grabs the kill, following the pop on E, and now right on crack trying to duel the enemy support. Doesn't have any of the damaging summon spells and ignite, but the minion wave actually doing quite a bit of damage. All too cool. If he is EQ, might be able to continue. Come on, support combat. Okay, lands the Q. He's got wave, man. You can fight. You got wave. He doesn't have ignite. Oh, goodness gracious. It's, it's just it, it's just bait, man. Rabon, not very concerned with the event horizon. Goal. We have to lose. Oh, yeah, Rabon, not really caring about event horizon. That's the cool thing about the Vladimir matchup. And Pantheon now just literally going anywhere he can but top lane. He's like, you go take care of that. Yeah, Mikey Milk finds himself an R. Doesn't like it. Just going to take some camps. All too cool trying to back off here as they see. He just ulted. Oh, they're red buff. Yep, curtain call comes out. All too cool might just be dead. They're going to try to block with the AD carry. Still possible dive set up here as Vladimir pushing in. They do a vision on him with the control ward there. So Tristana needs to honestly just back off his turret. Meanwhile, top side, more teams. Another trade coming in. Grabs a Gnarled. great gnarled. This llama should be okay to get out of this. It's just gonna be a lot of like chip damage in. Yeah, another stun comes through. Maybe another Q comes off. Nope, not yet. And there, yep. Ooh, Hungry Hawk actually gonna test with the Mikey Milk. I thought it was just gonna be the back off from Antac, but they're gonna try to get test. Root comes in on a Happy Hawk. Milky Milk can't do too much else. As Rabon oh. stunned up big. Only for Mikey Milk grabs himself the kill onto the enemy mid laner with Zenon. Able to get out for now. Event Rising to keep those two up. Darken, though, still free hitting from the side. And attack like forward. Flash forward from the enemy jungle. Mikey Milk in the middle. Trying to do it again. Big new ult. He's going to find a few. And that's another kill for a rampage. Two low health bars right on crack. Looking for Hungry Hawk. Darken able to finish him off as Antac fighting for his life with all the cool. But comes through. There's play connects. Double kill. Deadly flourish. Not the triple taken away. But it's a full ace. As I believe there's a kill top lane from the Meganar. As well, and there's another solo kill topside. So we have a 13 minute five man ace of Gapagul and a, a near 6k gold lead. This is vastly different from our last game. It really went the complete opposite last time. I mean, we saw Vagar there had no mana, which is what I was saying. They needed to just back off there. Yeah, that was. I was expecting just, hey, let's let An Antac back off the tower give the tower we're gonna push mid try to get prior there we know vladimir's already bot side we know the noon is already bot side we know leona's probably walking back to bot lane with the gin let's push up mid try to get some damage off that tower even take it uh with vagar and nunu or not vagar news vagar amumu a little too close there for my tongue to differentiate um, yeah here. try try to get something back for it and just go for a trade instead they went for the contest what they were not set up to do all 
too cool. Had to come back all the way from base with a low health bar. Uh, Antac was not in the position to help them contest initially. They end up going into a choke point. It, and they didn't do a terrible job. They do get the kill on a Rabond, but it was, in the end, not even remotely worth it. As now, this Ludicrous Land, 23 seconds till this next Dragon spawns, which is a nice perk. But, I mean, you're still dealing with a hard losing top side. Antac is way out of position. Yeah, sorry, buddy. No rocket jump team of that. Then on is unstoppable. Mike and Milka try to drive some contestants about that. This might honestly be 2v1 able as Nar gets the ult back. Does not have Mega though to continue the fight, so it needs to be careful. Suns come either. through. Ignites down. The spear not gonna get him. Mike and goes for the flash. W like? doesn't have the damage. He did an auto attacker E and now he gets away. Oh he no. just flashed in that even W was gonna burn him. It was it was the mental win. It was the flash mental win. He had to, he tried He's to like asserting his dominance. Yeah, it's yeah. a dominance flash. I could kill you, but I'm gonna choose not to. Yeah, you're yeah, you're 50 CS on my top laner, but <sighs> And with that 7k gold lead. <laughs> CI yeah, is approaching the, uh, on the ADC here. That's pretty bad at 15 minutes. We are approaching the territory of the game is over. Uh, 10k is normally the marker, but seeing we're only at 16 minutes, it's pretty short. Sure this round on track might actually go down. Nope, it's that. Nah, never mind. Oh, never mind. Predictive arm. Never mind. Very, nice, very, very nice. Very nice solar flare. Very nice. Pantheon coming in. Um, Doing. Actually, Fortune might damage. actually die this time. Oh, he did get the double on his hungry hog. I think he's going down here. Lives or bond? Yep. Flashes in place for some reason. Zuzi at the shutdown. Uh, as another shutdown coming in top side, so a little bit of overextension here from the two sides. Winnable. Uh, Hoggy Hark does get the big shutdown onto Nunu though, which is huge for the Vagar, so very nice and done. Uh, Pantheon getting that kill up in top side doesn't really actually matter. Uh, no, you're here. Pantheon is not gonna accomplish anything at this point. He could probably get another four kills and still not do anything. Yep, Jin Leona coming up. They might actually look for the play here. Yeah, yeah I haven't seen the Jin. Kind of suspects that, hey, uh, I think Rat on Crack might be around, and turn up there is the Shirley's Battle Song in. Majestic. Ooh, good flash away from the Deadly Flourish. Gonna buy him some time. He dodges away from the damage. Gets in, but stunned out of his combo. And yeah, you're just waiting for the Jin to finish you off at this point. And that's... I love the Shirelia's pick here by the Leona of the Locket. Let's you get right on top of people. Yep. Just run up and go. Nothing nothing fancy about it. Just more in. And now... More victory. Yeah. Grabs the bot lane turret with the Herald. Gets an object actually does get the objective bounty, which is nice. So a little bit of extra gold to try to fight. But now impossible to re-engage or bond. Puts in the ulti. Can't... Oh, does get the uh, ulti cool. With the damage what as Flash into the snowball. Vet Horizon. Locks up two. Not the damage coming through. Mikey Milk finally gets his rebond. Grabs some healing. E not going to do too much damage. Vagar trying to get away with the Glacial, but more teams is here. And that means that he is very, very dead. Mikey Milk, again, looking. But Vladimir has so much healing, man. And meanwhile, top side. Because that was a 3v4. That was a 3v4. Uh, Majestic Lama is still regretting his decisions. Damn. <laughs> I said he was a Zack top one trick. I didn't think it was only Zack. I mean, this is a very rough angle. Two and five on Pantheon is... It's 9k gold lead, 23 to 7 in kills. I hate to say it, but it's has been a top death both games. Yeah, I mean, it didn't look as bad last game because, you know, it's nasty. He takes some time to ramp up, but this is... Yeah, this is a beatdown. Hungry Hawk, what is that TP, my guy? You are inviting yourself to get the shutdown action, so kind of worth in the end. <laughs> well, they might get new new here. Yeah, maybe with the wild growth. So possibly just jabating me entirely. So that, I guess that's worthwhile. Nunu going a little bit too easy. Rat on crack didn't have the solar flare. Darkin was like farming something else. Wasn't there at that time. So actually kind of worth. That TP was a little horrendous if he didn't get the kill. As Darkin looking for the support, will have to settle for oh. just getting sent back to Fountain. Phew! Shutdown for Antac. All too cool though. Soon to fall. Then played will secure his Lord Cheens. Great hop actually over Gromp to get away. Go Gromp. Just like Llama. Slow down. More teams should be out okay. Nothing personal, kid. And yeah, uh, I. Cool. GBG. Glad to see it. Signs of life, man. We're 
We're still eight. We're still at eight. Given up. Eight k, eight and a half k in the hole, but like, keep it up. Mikey Milk looking for the engage on Rad on crack. More teams though. Has Mega again. Has the ulti again. That means stuns are coming through. Leona grabbing one. More teams are going very low. Might be able to find the gun, but Jetson, but is it worthwhile? Jetson finds one. Finds two. The triumph healing is enough. The shutdown on Leona, and that's a ton of gold. Back in the pockets of GBG, Majestic Llama actually back in the game at five and five now. Sub by some metric of amazement. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I'm not. I still would have preferred that to go on the Vagar, but Pantheon <laughs> is actually a champion now. I, I'm not sure what the logic there with more teams and right on crack trying to extend that fight, and not trying to just go for the escape mode, but. Could be just a little bit of cockiness going on here. Yeah, three K gold back. Hungry Hawk even looking for the flank here. Is again looking for another fight in mid lane. Dragon up seven seconds. Might be a contest here. Panther going back to base. Does not have the Grand Star Fall notably, so we'll not have that for Dragon. This should just be a give unless Mikey Milk really wants to go for it. Yeah, all they're gonna have is Wild Growth and Vagar ult. Rebond looking to cheese. Finds the Amumu. Grabs the Q. Very respectful no, flash. You need the flash though? That was I don't I he has he did I don't think he had any vision. He had no idea if he was about to get in on. Ben Horizon doesn't find anyone. Free Dragon, very well over to CI, pushes them up to soul point. The early pressure working out in their favor is now all too cool. Gonna be committed on. The early kills did help. I mean you're back down to around a seven K gold I say down to, it's still a seven K gold lead, but it was much worse, so like, you're back in the realm of possibility with Tristana and with Vagar that you actually do manage to scale into some kind of a team. Yeah, if you can get a couple objective bounties here, I mean, it goes up pretty fast. No one has no one has shut down the blue side anymore, but... Still, still possible. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot of gold back. You're getting some ability to, like, farm. I think there's a little bit of overzealousness. The Vagar TP somehow worked out. I still think that's a terrible TP. <laughs> oh, I, I understand. But ended up working out luckily. Uh, as there's a bit of an overcommit from, I think, Zenon on that one. Looking for more damage than he had. Kirk Girl's coming out. Gonna try to force something over here. Hungry Hawk stunned up by Run on Crack, but he is all by his lonesome here against the Vagar. Lord Chiefs finally coming over, but isn't Mega just yet. Finally takes it going oh, for Hungry Hawk. And that's a stun on the Vagar and a dead mage from mid. Dark and trying to run away, but Magician Llama actually here flashes away from the Nar and Mike Milk able to grab the kill is on the backside. <laughs> Antac grabbing another rat on crack and Morty trying to do what they can, but now they're 2v4. Double kill for the Tristana. Make it a triple in the books. And all of a sudden it is a slaughter bond. Coming around to finally join the fight. All too cool. Very low. Mikey Milk. Low as well. Flash forward. Grabs the kill. Heal comes out on the Majestic Lava. Getting some healing from the ulti as well, but it's not enough. Pantheon finds the eighth. The Tristana finally goes down, and somehow, someway, GBG find a team fight win in an ace at 22 minutes for a 7,000 gold deficit. It is quite the fiesta thus far. As we have a kill onto Darken in mid. I think a little bit of a recession there in the tower. Mikey Milk also going to fall down here. Llama caught out as well. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's just over exception. That's just overextension. And now, just kind of seeing where this game goes. Back up to around and a little shy of, like, still around the 7k gold lead. That much hasn't changed uh, in any discernible way. But with Baron up now, both teams gonna have to be a lot more careful about how they pick these fights. Another misplay from that could be GBG coming well and truly back into this game in both gold and objectives. Still objective bounties up for them on the map. Just Llama though, face checking. Right on crack, find the stun. There's no load. All that damage is actually immunity by so much more time. And now all too cool, getting in with the rest of the team. Wild Growth can keep it alive. Big stuns. Comes through on everybody. Rebon's already saved. Just Llama, huge damage from the Vagar as well. Hungry Hawk finds another 
It's a double kill though for Rabon as Antac and Hungry Hawk trying to kite away. Antac gets the shutdown on to Hungry Hawk and it might be the overextensions now. More teams, the carries are still alive and well. Tristana jumping for the resets. Gets the bomb to explode. Double kill for the Tristana and the carries make it happen for GBG. Very well played by the side of Majestic Llama to extend that fight as long as he did. Darkin's still alive though. Might look for the kills. These are low health bars. Can just Gale Force forward, but he doesn't have it up and available. So we'll have to play this a little bit more cautiously. Deadly Flourish. Can't find his way on to Hungry Hawk. And it will just be a farm up and retreat from both sides. Darkin? I believe I'm back now? Yes, you are back. Uh, my computer just blue screened. Ah, very good. Yes. It was quite random. Unfortunate. Well, we had dragons spawning here in 30 seconds on the Infernal. It is a seven, that's actually under 7k gold lead now for Climbing Iron as they have been kind of falling out of grace here as the game moves forward. Some interesting misplayed fights. Not able to get on the carries the last two and they've been able to do quite a bit of the work. Tristana coming back from 1 and 8 to 6 and 9. With all the shutdown gold that's gone over her side, up in trying to get up in items. Not necessarily at Jin's level yet, but getting there quite quickly. Maybe I should blue screen more often. It might make the game a little bit. Yeah, it's been a little bit fast. A hungry Hawk predating forward, trying to look for more teams. Does find him with the glacial as well. Rooted up, not mega yet. Stunned up before he gets it. Hungry Hawk basically has Rabond. Misclicks his stopwatch. Mikey milks the three man <laughs> no. engage. You couldn't ask for more, but Rabond is still pushing forward. Should be like, hungry. No, Wago keeps him alive for now. Finally, Rabond grabs the kill. <laughs> Curtain Cole finds one on the backside as well as Round on Crack trying to get around the map. Mikey Milk pressing forward the shutdown for the Amoeba on the bottom of Majestic Llama and Antac. The last two remain. It's 3v2. The Nunu still full HP and Antac dealing with almost no HP left remaining. Majestic Llama tries to dodge away from the double. Really, he's going for the 80 carry and Zedon finds it and finally making good on the gold lead. <laughs> Climbing Iron comes back in it, pushing the lead back up towards 8k. They're going to forego the dragon for now, grab themselves a turret, and hopefully go back to the objective soon thereafter. Darken from afar pumping out the DPS. And while Hungry Hawk Vladimir found... getting a little lucky there. Yeah, we're getting very lucky there. Hungry Hawk, <laughs> great pick to start off on the more teams. Unfortunately, the rest of the team just stuck in that choke point. Couldn't get out the damage after Mikey Milk's engage. And that was the point where I said, if Mikey Milk finds an engage and they can't they don't actually have anything to follow up, this team just runs out of options so quickly. CI able to re-engage with the curtain call, able to re-engage with the snowballs, and they end up making it happen. And Rabond, with enough healing, finally comes through. And there's still no anti-healing on the side of GBG to really go for it, except for Mikey Milk's Stormail. And that is completely useless against Vladimir, as he's never going to be auto-attacking this Amumu for any reason. No, and you're never going to get to immobilize him pretty much. Pretty cool. Yep. Ooh, he double ulti do. here, but Polymorph for more teams going to go down. Antac manages to skirt away from now. The bus start actually pushing him out of the event horizon in time. So more teams does burn a flash for nothing. In the mid lane, loses Mega. Hungry Hawk though, in trouble. Big damage from Darkin, and yep, right on crack. Kind of KSing that one away. Antac stunned up by Ooh. the beautiful solo player. Darkin goes godlike. More teams excited up and flash forward. Right on crack going again on the Altu Cool. Majestic Llama falls down. Darkin claims the double. Make it the triple. All too cool, falls without another word. It's mid lane tier two that's going to fall next. Four teams hopping forward. And with 12k in the lead, the Infernal Soul now in their possession. Climbing Iron with a few slithers looking to end this game. Mikey Milk's gonna try to stall off for as long as he can, but buddy, you do not have the HP to live through this. Yep, this is gonna be the mid lane inhibitor for a certain top lane inhibitor turret. Well, they might not end the game off of this push, they are okay, finally, at long last, in game-ending territory. 13k be the gold lead. Bills. A lot of kills. Lots of kills over yet. We're at 67 kills in 29 minutes. Ooh, a minute here. We are, we are pushing even solo queues acceptable boundaries. 18 of those kills, mind you, on to Darken alone. <laughs> Man is uh, unbelievably he's... massive. He is four items at 29 Ooh. minutes. Oh, uh, more teams looking for it. Here's he lunges forward, can't find anything off of the initial engagement. That means it will be just the walk back for now, unless 
MX Xenon looking for Antac and Hungry Hawk. Antac finds some really good damage onto the Nunu. Hungry Hawk flashing forward, but a flash in return, and that is not worth it for Hungry Hawk as his flash trading in kind for the junglers. I mean, you need that man to get out of the next engage, and CI has a mind with, with the wallets they have packed full to just shove it right back down your throat. Four yeah, man strong in mid. Vega no flash feels pretty terrible here, especially considering when the fight can get worse. Yep, and pushing forward here. Mid lane inhibitor is down, so they have barren up super minions. Give it only one wave, and CI did ma manage to. Oh, or, no, sorry, GBG did manage to defend their top and turret. Ult. Oh, get back. Uh, Antac, also by. Mikey Milk. That's a GA, buddy. Uh, you're gonna be able to probably get out of this one. Yep, Darkin, still alive, still alive. And the triple. Oh, Magistic Galala. Ah, the shutdown does go over. He does manage to get one kill, but with four quick kills. Hungry Ox, the last one that remains. He's in Rabon, who can just pretty much kill him whenever he wants to. Flashes forward. The Event Horizon is used, and yeah, now he's just dead. That is the full five man ace. And finally, at 30 minutes, 15k in the gold lead. A valiant effort from GBG to try to bring that one back, but unfortunately. The wallet's a little bit too heavy to hold up. Yeah, and fifteen thousand gold is just a, just a little bit over. <laughs> yeah, the early dragons hurting them dearly. As the Nexus finally falls, CI gonna start their first week two to zero in the PSU LCS. And with that, that ends the match for tonight. I mean, very interesting second match. Uh, despite, I mean, pro props to GBG for trying to bring that one back. There was no reason. No, by they could have easily given up, but they tried. I mean, not even just to give up. There's just no reason they should ever have that position to begin with in general. Which I think if you're CI, well, yes, you absolutely stomp the early game. wasn't close. It's something to look back at and kind of reanalyze how you played that one out because uh, – when well, you're 10k gold up at 20 minutes. Yeah, it shouldn't take you another another. And you have the comp that probably game. has some deep, pretty solid scaling in comparison to a lot of the champions that it's had. It is, it, it's, it's a hard sell. It's a real hard sell that there's even, like, room to breathe at that point. So, certainly still look at the eyesight. I mean, again, congratulations for the 2-0. Uh, definitely played well both games. The absolute stomp of an early game, game two, was a certain turnaround from the kind of jungle struggles that we saw them have in game one, with MX Zen on on the Zen looking going a little bit too far in just a lot to, of scenarios. Yeah, it, it's just like it's the it's the one bridge too far argument where you have a good idea, you're just taking you're pushing it just further than you can, and ends up actually biting you in the butt at, too much. Uh, GBG again, good job on the comeback. Actually, fairly solid responses in game one. Uh, for a lot of the early game stuff they had, they punished the overextensions. They went and converted it into early dragons. Like, that stuff is good to see. Uh, so neither of these two teams really just... It, it wasn't a... Well, it was definitely a one-sided affair in the second game. Uh, yeah, they, it was not It was not. It was not a, a lay down and die. It wasn't It wasn't a complete rollover. Yeah, they both have, both have things they did very well. Both have things that they can improve on, put it all together, and do better next week definitely uh step one for climbing iron is banning champions drafting yes making yes, sure you just do your champions draft. yep step one uh other than that maybe just look i mean again the minutiae of what of what they're what was happening there is pretty small uh it's more just like hey your 10k gold up you know your 10k gold up we can see you trying to go for these like really like hyphy plays to try to keep a, a pressure on there's a better way to do this. It's so that you can play the slow choke out game. Like you can, once you're up 10k, scaling doesn't matter at that point. Too terribly much. No, unless, no, unless you're no. unless you're like playing it like stupidly slow, like for no reason, like leaving Baron up forever when you can obviously yeah. take it. Especially when they're playing into a comp of relatively low wave clear, they really did not. Yeah, have you have Vagar and you have Tristana. That's kind of it. Yeah, you you don't have great wave clear. You could have easily just done a little split pushing, played safe. Yeah, send Vladimir topside, make sure you're coming in, sinking your waves, take some Tibber turrets, come back through, clear out jungle, take your dragons without a contest. There's no real reason you should be losing a fight at any point uh, once you're up that much gold. Uh, you can just kind of play the game out how you want to uh, as long as you're not 
being overly greedy, being overly aggressive and running a team. So that's like the one thing to look for CI is like, hey guys, you played early game really well. You absolutely wiped the floor with these guys. Not even close. Top lane was turbo diff the entire time. Jungle was doing great. The level two gank worked out fantastically. Couldn't have asked for better. Yeah, but Pan Pantheon cannot be allowed to get back into the game at that point. When he's exactly. when he's zero and five or one and five, he just he cannot be back in the game at that point. Yeah, and I mean on the side of GBG, you, it's not like they played necessarily too terribly horrible. I think top lane definitely needs a look in terms of like, hey, do we know our matchups? Like, yeah, if the pan because that Pantheon's a response but... into Nar, so that's kind of like a this is this is something that you chose to pick. I mean, if he blinds Pantheon top, and then you pick Nar, and you get stop, it's like, okay. It's one thing, yes. Maybe don't but... blind the Panth. That's fine. <laughs> like, that, ha that that's just what happens. It's like, hey, if you're super comfortable on Pantheon, I don't blame you for the pick. It's not the greatest option. It's not my first pick. But I'm not going to blame you for it. If, if you're like, yeah, if you're like a super good Pantheon player, like, sure. If you feel comfortable blinding it, fair enough. We'll see what happens. That was a counter pick, and it went that poorly. <laughs> Yeah, and if you're if you're not confident, obviously he's a Zach one trick like we talked about. Yep. If if they're gonna ban Zach, I mean any team that is even looking at OP.gg is gonna ban Zach. So why are you saving your counter pick at that point for a guy that's probably gonna lose the lane? It's I don't know. Draft game two is definitely better for both teams. Yes, they uh, both both improved. And again, GBG on the map, just a little bit. This does not include the level two gang bot lane. I'm not saying you have to overly respect level two's bot. That's kind of like that. That's the cheese. That's like yeah, that's the new, the new new. You like have a new when you see a new new or a Shaco or a Zin or a Jarvan jungle. You have to like or a Twitch in the back of your head. You're just like ah, they're gonna try something stupid here uh, yeah. for that level two. And that's something to that keep in your back head. That's not a huge deal. I would not. I don't blame you for dying to a level two gang. That's fine. But it's like dealing with early game hemorrhaging. Dealing with that kind of play is certainly something they could definitely work on. Um, the hemorrhaging top, I think they actually dealt with fairly well. They just kind of left it on the island. And Nar didn't en did end up being actually that huge of a problem uh, up until no, they had, he... like, a huge gold lead. Like, they dealt with that pretty well, all things considered. But, like, mid lane was mid lane was counterpicked. That's a hard one to kind of go around. I think bot lane was one area where they should have put a lot more focus. You had, like, a really aggressive AD carry that you can play around. Just on it can blow people up, especially early on uh, in that yeah. in that Jin Leona the, matchup. The That's punishable. Kind of... Lulu kind of pulls her back a little bit. Uh, and this is even beyond the draft. Like, you can come in there yeah, with an Amumu and get great gank set up onto a Leona. Um, that kind of stuff. So, like, there, there's something, like, that's a nice video where to play. It's, like, kind of fight and figure out where you want to play the game. If you know top is going to hemorrhage, okay, we can't be going top anymore. That's just, like, after the first, like, two or three solo kills, you're like, okay, this is not going to happen. Uh, we are not <laughs> killing We are not killing this guy. Uh, mid lane, it's hard. It's a Vladimir. It's a hard gank. You're in a really bad counter matchup for lane. Vigor has a really tough time with that one. That's when we're like, okay, sit under your tower, buddy. Farm it up. Do the best you can. Because if we get you to late game, Vladimir does have a problem where if he just gets stuns, like, like we saw Hungry Hawk do in yes, that last did. dragon fight, where he stuns Vladimir for 10 seconds and just kills him. Like, that's perfect. That's how you play the late game. That's beautifully done. But like but playing that, was just so far the lead, leading that leading up to that is what ends up killing you. Like bot lane's like, hey, this is the lane you can actually win. Let's figure that out. Let's focus it early. At least like just go there from time to time and hover uh, to make sure Nunu can't get too much off. Um, and then there, of course there's macro decisions, but we're not gonna get into that. This is intramurals. It's yeah, not it's a huge deal. But like there's definitely stuff to work on for both these teams. But still, far from the worst played games I've seen. In PSU LCS, no, this was entertaining. Like, yeah, this was well, even besides. I've seen some very bad games that were also very entertaining to watch. Uh, these weren't necessarily. Uh, these were. Uh, no, that was that was fine. You haven't seen nothing yet, my guy. You are, you are fresh. You have a, When it gets to the point where I'm playing the actual clown fiesta music on stream, that's when it's bad. Oh, I'm sure. I have but, a game um, tomorrow at eight. I am 100 percent sure things will be great. But um, uh, no, these teams definitely played like fairly solid games, uh, for the most part. That was far from the worst I've seen. You have some individual differences. That's expected. This isn't the pro scene. We're not expecting to play everyone perfectly. Uh, that's the whole point. <laughs> that, that's the point. Sure. But um, it was a good games all around. Again, congratulations over to Climbing Iron. Uh, climbing up to two and zero on the week is certainly an accomplishment. We'll help to see them do some more next week. Again, getting up into that top end of the bracket initially is certainly a boon for your strength of schedule, which can help a lot when it comes to playoffs later on. 
So we'll have to see here. We'll see what kind of games get casted for the rest of the weekend. Uh, I, for, unfortunately, probably won't be around to cast much tomorrow. We'll have to see. My schedule is kind of up in the air right now. But for those games that we can't get cast, we'll cast on the main channel. If not, keep your eyes on the self-promo channel. They'll be having a ton of announcements for people who are, like, self-streaming their games and all that good stuff. So just stick around for that. Uh, otherwise, thank you guys very much for watching. I've been Infamous Trash. Join Hi, you. it's Ben Runk. Yep, and we'll catch you guys next time on The Rift. Have a great Saturday, rest of your Saturday evening. Hopefully we're back tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, otherwise, peace out.